स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नमः फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू द स्टडी ऑफ भगवत गीता चैप्टर थ्री फेमसली नोन एज द चैप्टर ऑन कर्म योगा एंड वी हैव कवर्ड द फर्स्ट नाइनटीन श्लोक दो वी हैव टेकन अ लिटिल टाइम टू प्रोसीड as far as the shloka number is concerned but it is our intention that we create a taste for a higher value of life i would like to be popular to cater to your taste as swami madhavanand ji told me never try to cater to public taste if you are teaching the scriptures you must always concentrate on creating a new taste for higher values of life now karma yoga as swami ji said in the modern age as because his guru told him so sri ramakrishna said in the present day modern world gana mishra bhakti prashasta the most convenient highway to liberation liberation or emancipation moksha or mukti a highway a right royal passage is gana mishra bhakti that is gyana is absolute knowledge of the true essence of the world and bhakti is emotion the two principal faculties of human personality rationality knowledge and emotionality that is interacting emotionally with something else a proper blending of these two rotating around the awareness of presence of the divine not on worldly things awareness of presence of the divine what is it in practice he says gyana mishra bhakti kali yuge prashasta that's what he said swami ji took it up and he said this is what karma yoga is gyana mishra bhakti they are blended together so perfectly the both of them when put together in the art of living in this world it will lead you to your desired goal this is how we should try to understand why because we cannot go back to that civilization when these books were written the world has fundamentally moved far 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 away from the civilization and the culture which the society developed in the days when we lived in the forest and the dales and caves and for that day for that time of the society few injunctions were given do this don't do this do this don't do this don't violate the cosmic law on which the world is run by god don't violate you be a part and parcel of that contribute to that take advantage of that flow all this has been said in those days what about today let us be very frank excuse my language our life 
is a rat race. Climbing on each other's shoulders, aspiring to create, grab the maximum of worldly benefit that I can. Morals and ethics are trampled behind and we run like mad to fulfill our ambitions. That is how it is. So, we are the most evolved of biological creature. The purpose of being born is to manifest the potential divinity already within us. That is the purpose of being born a human. And we have forgotten all that purpose and we are in this rat race. Some of us, we don't like to be in the rat race. Admirably good. But for them, what is their life? Fulfillment of the duty to the family, to the society, to the country, and to humanity. That sense of duty, like an octopus with eight arms, has bound you, bound you over. How do you come out of it? You say you are made in the image of God. You say the purpose of life is to manifest the divinity within yourself, to see the divine everywhere. This is what you declare from the housetop in the scriptures. But can you tell me how to achieve that in this modern world? Karma Yoga is an answer to this very pertinent question. We all know how we are bound down by our sense of duty. That duty has various fears. Family duty, duty to the society, the community, the society, the nation to which me, I belong, and to the humanity, humanity at large. I am busy. How do I manifest the potential divinity while I am busy here? <coughs> I'm sorry. The answer to this is convert your flow of life with a little attitudinal correction. Correction of your attitude a twist in your perspective as to how you look at it, the world and a crystal clear rock solid understanding how do you practicalize it in your life. Karma Yoga teaches you that. So Karma Yoga and Bhakti Yoga Jnana Yoga and Raj Yoga. These are the four aspects of human personality. The concept of Karma Yoga was Yaga, Yajna, Kriya, Karma, etc., etc., etc. That was enunciated in the old ages, even in the Upanishads. Sri Krishna in Bhagavad Gita also has introduced that subject. But he says, and when he says so in the Gita, that is about 5,000 years ago or 3,000 to 5,000 years before Christ, this Bhagavad Gita, which is not yet properly dated, enunciated how, with the change in society and social values and changing sense of responsibility, even then, how with a little correction in your attitude of life, a change in the perspective with which you conduct your life and a rock-solid understanding what is the goal? How to achieve it? All these questions are answered 
in the concept of karma yoga in union with the divine. So we have studied enough about it and we are today going to study the shloka number 20 and I promised you that I am giving you a running, running translation of the verse. There is something very intricate, very in-depth idea hidden into that shloka. Today I will concentrate on that. Let us start from the 19th shloka as a quick refreshing memory. Tasmat asaktaha satatam karjam karma samacharaha asakto hi acharan karma param apnoti purusha. The paraphrase and the translation is tasmat, therefore, conclusion, conclusion. He has built up arguments after arguments and arguments. Now he is concluding. Therefore, having understood all I have told you before, Sri Krishna tells Arjuna and through Arjuna to all of us, the students of the Gita. Tasmat, therefore, let there be no hesitancy, no ambiguity, no confused thinking about it. The conclusion is asaktaha satatam karjam karma samachara. It needs no paraphrase. Therefore, be totally unattached. Expect nothing from this world nothing while you are performing your duties of life. Be a perfectionist, be a pursuer of thoroughness and correctness, be very organized, methodical. No slipshodness is permissible, no sloppiness is permissible. Be absolutely methodical, correct, thorough, perfect, excellent. And continue to perform your duties of life. How? Asakta son. Don't allow your mind to play tricks on you and deep down within your being you expect this you expect that, you expect it. What are the expectations? Three different cardinal desires. Putraishana, Vittaishana, Jashaishana. Aishana is desire. Deep-seated desire in human personality. I would like to be remembered when I am dead and gone. Therefore, I would like to a generation behind me. My children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren behind me so that I am not forgotten. That's a deep weakness of human psyche. The second is Vittaishana. Vitya is wealth, power and pelf. We would all want to be wealthy, powerful, and at top of the society because of my wealth. That is a strong desire in human psyche. And the third is Jashaishana, that is, desire to be appreciated, adored, admired, approbated to the extent of being worshipped. Oh, Swamiji is a wonderful person. Every act and deed of mine is oriented towards fulfill this expectation that I'll hear people say, you are a wonderful person. That is Jasha Eshana. 
یہ کین ڈیزائر فار ریپوٹیشن اپریسیشن اپروبیشن ایڈمیریشن ورجنگ آن بینگ ورشپڈ دیز آر دا تھری کارڈینل ڈیزائرس وچ آر موٹیویٹرس آف آور لائف ایکٹیویٹیز دے آر دی انسینٹیوس دے آر دا موٹیویٹرس Sri Krishna has told you many a times before, now he is concluding. Asakta son, be absolutely non-expectant. Don't expect anything from this world. It has long promises to make. It has no capacity to fulfill its promise. And if it is a passing experience, it is transitory. Don't look at that. Satatam, continuously, not that I practice it for half an hour and the next 23 hours I'm in it. Nothing doing. Uninterrupted, on a brick, without any termination, It has to continue. What? Karyam karma samyak achar. Karyam karma is what is compelled by, on you by the sense of your duty. Sense of duty compels you to perform. Perform it correctly samyak achar. Samyak means in totality. It should be perfect, correct, methodical, no sloppiness, no slit shortness, excellent. Everything absolutely proper. Please kindly do that without any asakti, asaktaha. without any attachment. Why? Why this tall claim? The next line tells you, asakta hi acharan purushaha param apnoti. If you can do so, you make a start and by your willpower, with your ingenuity, with your love for God and your conviction that the Divine is everywhere. Convert your life into an endless, rational, emotional, ingenious, determined interaction with the Divine. Rational is Jnana Marga, Emotion is bhakti marga, ingenuity is karma marga, and determination is raja yoga, yoga marga. All those four integrated together every moment of your life. Not only when you are in this shrine hall, every moment of your life. Tasmat. اسکت ستتم کارجم کرم سماچر اسکت ہی آچرن کرم پرم آپنوتی پرش پرم آپنوتی آپنوتی مینس پراپنوتی یو اچیو واٹ از دیٹ اچیومنٹ اٹ از ناٹ این آبجیکٹو اچیومنٹ You get it by your hand and say, this is mine. Ownership. No. Abhinnataya prapyati abhidam gachati is prapnauti. What does it mean? Through this process of converting your life into an endless interaction with the awareness of presence of the Divine, who from your Jnana Marga conclusion, he is everywhere. There is not a speck of space or an iota of time 
where he is not because he is absolute and omnipotent infinite and eternal let me symbolize that infinite and eternal in the form of maishta deva or ishta devi he is everywhere because i am still a novice i can't concentrate on formless presence so let me symbolize that formless presence into the form of my ishta deva or my ishta devi my chosen deity whatever it is they are all the same essentially they are one they are of different names and forms because of our requirement our needs paramapnoti you reach that sublime goal and you fulfill the meaning of the word purusha no more a literal grammatical word purusha here it spiritually means he who is aware of one that resides in this body mind complex which is known as i am the first person singular number of many language grammars i a capital i that i is in me and he is eternal i can't understand the eternal and the infinite so that eternal infinite has for my sake with utter compassion has taken this form <coughs> my ishta deva my ishta dev if i do so param apnoti purusha i will be able to attain that sublime supreme goal beyond which there is no achievement required left <coughs> sorry that is what it is we have read it many a times and i will not spare you to listening to this conclusion of the karma yoga now to continue the study up to the 18th chapter in every shloka there's a little place for a question that is the beauty of this creation jalpatmak kathan that is you are answering a question but along with it there is an inbuilt question in it what is the inbuilt question in it we read in the scriptures that there are four castes and the brahmanas are only entitled to reach the supreme goal arjuna says i am not a brahmana i am a kshatriya what about me then he is saying universally he so ever whoever he may be if he or she gets into that habit of converting the total flow of life into an endless worship of the divine he will reach the goal it is universally applicable as swami ji says in his writings each soul is potentially divine caste system has no hold on it each soul is potentially divine the purpose of life is to manifest that potential divinity already within us do it by jnana do it by bhakti do it by karma do it by yoga but for heaven's sake do it and be free that is the end all and be all of religion 
what a forceful universally applicable statement here it also means the same anybody who practices this art of karma yoga on our shakti yoga nira shakti yoga i am not attached and as i told you in the final stages you say dear lord i am worshiping you i am doing my duty to the best of my ability with thoroughness correctness perfection and excellence that is my part of the job i am doing it i expect nothing it is his duty to give me what i am trying to achieve don't ask of him as soon as you ask you get stuck to that and after a while you say god does not respond it is all hogwash it is all bullshit it's a fairy tale the spirituality is about is the opium for the masses that's what the communists used to say you will also say so why because after a while you say my expectations are not being fulfilled so it is all bosh it's all bullshit therefore don't expect don't create a problem for yourself you do it for the love of god i love you and i worship you that's all i don't know what you think of me or not i don't bother i do my very best to love you so he says it is universal whereas arjuna says sir the scriptures say that it is only meant for the brahmanas what do i do i am a kshatriya look into the next shlok in the next shloka he says well 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 history shows what does history shows janaka ashapati ajat shatru they are all emperors they are all kings but they have been addressed as rajar shi janaka rajar shi ajat shatru rajar shi ashghosha raja as well as rishi joined together rajarshi that means they are quite wide awake in this world of diversity they are performing the duties of an emperor or a king but inwardly they have achieved that stage of parama apnoti purusha they have achieved that state how by performing karma yoga thoroughly correctly perfectly excellent listen to this shloka now karmani eva hi sansiddhi asthita janaka adaya लोक संपश्यम कर्तुम अर्हसी दिस इज द कैच एंड आई स्पेंड क्वाइट सम टाइम ऑन दिस श्लोक टूडे बिकॉज इट हैज टू बी टोटली क्लियरली अंडरस्टूड इफ देर इज अ स्लाइटेस्ट हेजिटेशन यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू डेवलप दैट मोटिवेशन hesitancy not understanding cuts at the root of motivation and incentive that is psychological therefore you have to be totally non hesitant and totally convinced in a rock solid manner in a crystal clear manner that karma yoga will reach me to my desired goal param apnoti purusha now let us first as i told you the method of study of the scriptures first get word to word meaning then understand the running meaning of the verse or the shloka 
and then understand what is the intention of the author which is hidden between words. That is lakshata, the intended meaning of the author. Let us read first. Karmani eva samsiddhim asthita janakadaya. Janaka adaya, adaya means etc, etc, etc. Adi plural adaya. Janaka and Adi and Adi and Adi. Janaka and etc, etc, etc. Because he knows that the students of that time would know who are they. Ajata Shatru, Ashwadhosha. Two I refer to you straight away. There are many more. He says, Janaka, Ajata Shatru, Ashwadhosha. They were all emperors. From morning till night, they were managing their empire. What more worldly it could be? But karmana eva hi janaka daya samsiddhim asthita. They were entrenched. Asthita means they were so poised, entrenched, that they cannot be uprooted. Uprooted from what? Karma Yoga. Karmana Eva. Evi Biniyogi. That means have no hesitancy. The word Eva. Karmana Eva. Karmana Eva. That is conjunction. Doesn't matter. Karmana Eva. By Karma Yoga itself. Ebi Biniyogi means have no hesitancy, have no doubt. Have nothing to shake your confidence on this approach. Janakadi, that is, they ran an empire. They became rishis. Rajar Shi Janaka, Rajar Shi Ajata Shatru, Rajar Shi Ashagosha. Their title, they were not Rajas, they were Raja Kam Rishi. Rishi is a man who goes in the forest and etc., etc., and by management and control of himself, he attains the divine. And Janaka and others, they have attained that same position. By running their empire, how did they run it? They run it, uh, they ran it as a karma yogi. Karmani eva sang siddhim, samyak siddhi, in totality, nothing beyond. The ultimate, the supreme, the sublime, awareness of oneness of the cosmos, and this ego merges into that. Karmana eva samyak siddhi, total integrated awareness of presence of the divine was achieved by Emperor, Emperor Raj, Janaka, Emperor Rajatshatru, Emperor Ashtagosha. <coughs> I'm sorry. This is how he says in the first sutra. Then he says, Loka Shangraham Evapi Sampasyan Kartumar Rasi. You too look at their lives. And even after you reached your goal, live a life of a karma yogi till your body falls off to set an example for the novices. This is what he says. So, the meaning of the shloka is, Arjuna, don't think that you are a Kshatriya and your sense of duty has called you to fight this life and death battle. 
in which you have to kill and to slay. In the process, there's a chance of you being killed. But remember, do it as a karma yogi. I assure you, in due course of time, you will reach that sublime goal, Sansiddhi, sublime goal. You will succeed in reaching that sublime goal. And having reached it, continue to lead such life so that you become a concrete, tangible ex example for people who are striving to reach that goal. For the welfare of the many, for the happiness of the many. Continue to do so. Don't stop helping others. This is what the meaning is. Now, let us understand from Swamiji's philosophy. What does happen actually? We are intellectually, slowly and slowly, getting convinced. But psychically, what is happening in me? After all, I am trying to achieve that goal. I should try and understand how I should get about it and how do I see that I am progressing? And how do I go? What is happening to me? How is my personality being modulated? How my personality is being created in a new manner? My personality, as of today, is a bundle of habits full of faults and failures, failties and follies. That is what I am today. And I am being exposed to Karma Yoga to convert my flow of life into a respectful, venerated interaction with the presence of God. That is what I am being asked to do in the present day that is the best way I have at my disposal. So let me see how I can do it. What happens to me? So let us analyze that aspect, the practicality of what happens when we grow and with examples. Examples are the best teachers. And the example starts very simply. We know water is a shapeless, tasteless, odorless liquid. Shapeless means it takes the shape of the container in which it is contained. A liter of water in a plastic can, it takes that shape remove it into a jar, one liter jar, it takes the shape of the jar. A pitcher, a huge glass, a bucket, a bowl, keeps on changing its shape. That is water. It has no taste. It has no odor. But it has a capacity of being tasty. It has a capacity to have odors, fragrant odors, in our drinks. We have a beautiful, soothing odor, and odor and a beautiful taste. Water can be converted to that. How do we convert? Firstly, our chitta, that which we call as our personality, our mind stuff, people call it by any, many names. I would request you students, please use the word chitta. Chitta means that element within us where chit, the chaitanya, is reflected. 
I am aware I am. Where is that coming from? My personality, my mind stuff, where the eternal Chidananda Swarup is reflecting. Chitta. Remember this word with this annotation. Don't forget it. I'll use that word for you. That, that chitta in me is compared to a water. Now, you are asked to think of the presence of the Divine rationally and you are asked to emotionally interact with great sympathy, with great empathy, with great attachment. My God, my Divine, my Mother, my Guru Maharaj, I am attached to Him. You are asked to think, what is happening? In a tasteless water, you are adding sugar crystals. You are stirring it. Your mind is being stirred with all these ideas. The awareness of presence of the Divine is a sugar crystal. And your mind is not at all divinized. It thinks of so many things without the divine, but the divine. You are a karma yogi. You are trying to think of the presence of the divine within you. And you are trying to serve the divine in this outside world. How? By performing your duty. Good enough. Awareness of the presence of the Divine as an example compared to the sugar crystal. And your chitta, where that eternal entity reflects awareness, your amness. That chitta is absorbing that idea as the sugar is being absorbed in water. The sugar is no more visible. But what is happening? The water is losing its character. Tasteless water is getting sweetened. You see, the water is getting sweeter. Awareness of divine being cultivated by you willfully, with determination, with veneration, respect, and emotional involvement. You are saturating your being. You are saturating your chitta with the awareness of presence of God. As water is getting sweetened, your chitta, your mind stuff, your being is getting divinized. Slowly but steadily according to your steadfastness. That is how you are growing. And a time comes when you tell your teacher, Sir, the water is no more dissolving sugar crystals. The sugar crystals are all accommodated below, at the bottom of the beaker, the bottom of the glass jar. What do I do? The teacher says, this position is a saturated solution of sugar of this water. This water is saturated solution of sugar. The sugar is no more being dissolved, but the sweetness of sugar has made that water extremely sweet, and the water cannot absorb anymore. It is known as saturated solution of water in sugar. Similarly, your chitta, your being, 
your personality, your mind stuff of which the mind is made, that is being saturated by the divine slowly and slowly without your knowledge. And when it is totally saturated, the water has lost its character of tastelessness. The water has been saturated with sugar. Your personality has been saturated with the divine. Awareness of the presence of the divine within you and in this whole world, and what is the instrument? Through the performation of your duty, karmana eva sangsiddhim, janakadaya astita. They have escorched themselves, irremovably placed, they cannot be uprooted. And thereafter, what happens, dear? Your teacher says, Light up your buns and burner. Put the beaker on that with all that grass, uh, sugar crystals and watch what happens. The water starts boiling and slowly and slowly the sugar is dissolving. And after it has dissolved, your teacher says, put in a little more sugar. And you see that sugar is also dissolving. After a while, it does not dissolve anymore. That solution is known as supersaturated solution, SS, sugar water, supersaturated solution. Your being is being slowly and slowly 5%, 7%, 10%, 12%, Fifteen percent takes a long time because you are a victim of your non-divine habits. You have to erode those non-divine habits and put in habits here. So slowly and slowly, your personality, your being is being saturated with the awareness of presence of the divine in your life. And your tapasya, though you have an inkling of the divine, but you don't stop at that. You would like to reach the sublime goal. So you boil yourself, you heat yourself. And your teacher says, get a piece of thread and leave it there in the water and another end across the beaker. Come and see what happens next morning. Next morning you come and eagerly run to the beaker to see what has happened. You will find the water has cooled down and there are crystals of sugar attached to that thin thread. You lift it up and you see sugar crystals, pure refined sugar crystals attached to that thread pure refined sugar crystals. Your attitude about the divine becomes totally pure, crystal clear, refined, and you live in God, you live with God, you live for the sake of serving God. That too because you have been blessed by God. Nothing but God in your life. This is what happens to you. And there's another explanation, dear. This is also very, very cogent, very relevant, and please kindly pay attention to listen to this. You as a human, for 70 years or 60 years, you're practicing the philosophy or the procedure of Karma Yoga. And through the process, by your own backbreaking effort, 
guidance of your Guru and compassionate blessings of the Divine, you have achieved that goal. What has happened? This so-called body-mind complex has developed an unshakable habit. You have detached yourself from the body. You are now absolutely aware. I am the Atman. I am Atma Brahma. Ah, Brahma me. You have achieved that goal. But because of your past karma, this body still lives. And this body has acquired a force of habit. So what happens? As long as that body is, though you are a realized soul, but your body is a victim of that beautiful habit of Bahujana Hitaya, Bahujana Sukhai. So you continue to perform your life in that manner. The end result is the lesser achievers who have not been able to reach that goal, they make you an example. Here is a person who has achieved the goal. He is one with God, but his life pattern is full of compassionate, serviceful, worshipful attitude of the divine. This is the inner meaning of this shloka. Let me read it for you now. Karmanaiva samsiddhi, that means karmana eva, eva biniyoge. Eva here means have no hesitancy, no doubt, no faltering that by this process of karmana, karma yoga, samsiddhim, samyak siddhi, Siddhi in totality, not partial, boiled over and crystallized sugar. Vigyani. Agyani, Gyani, Vigyani. For him, the whole world is full of divine. Crystallized. That crystallity, crystal clear understanding does not let you go. You have achieved by Karmana Eva. So only Brahmanas can through sannyasa reach there is not proper. This is why Swamiji has highlighted each soul is potentially divine. The purpose of human life is manifest that divinity within ourselves. Do it by karma, do it by bhakti, do it by jnana, do it by yoga. Any one or any mixture of them. But for heaven's sake, be free. That is the end all and be all of religions. Doctrines and dogmas are of secondary detail. That is what Swamiji says. And this is the source from which Swamiji speaks with such a confidence, supported by his own life's experience. I'll end up with an incident in Swamiji's life at a low, lower vein. What is that incident? Sri Ramakrishna asked Swamiji, Narayan, what is your goal of life? Mind you, Narayan is pre-Ramakrishna era. He has not yet been exposed to Sri Ramakrishna's philosophy. He has read books, heard, and it is before Sri Ramakrishna's period. Swami says, why, sir? I would like to be in Nirvikalpa Samadhi all the time. To keep my body-mind alive, occasionally I'll go up. I'll awake myself, eat something, and go into Samadhi again. 
I would like to enjoy the fruits of Samadhi. And Sri Ramakrishna, an excellent teacher that, is a, that he was, Acharya Ana Mahacharya, you are dear Lord, one of the greatest of all Acharyas. That is how we praise Sri Ramakrishna. So he says, fie on you, Narin. I never thought you are so mean, so pity. Hina mana nicha mana. Hina buddhi nicha mana. Your capacity of understanding is so despicably poor. And you are so mean at heart, you are always thinking of yourself. I thought, Narin, you will be a huge binyan tree, fig tree, a species of fig tree. And in your branches, thousands of thousands of birds will have shelter, protection, and travel weary people of the world. They will sit under your shade and they will be blessed and comforted. And you are only thinking of your own nirvikalpa samadhi. Fie on you. I can't look at your face. You are so mean-minded. And so, I would say, despicable as far as your reasoning is concerned. Mean-minded and hina buddhi of despicable intellect and heart. This is the secret here. Loka Sangrahami Vapi. Now, Arjuna, even if you have reached, set an example to people because your body mind complex is habituated. And I'll tell you another story, not, co not comparable with that. I asked somebody, Sir, when, when I was realized soul Swami, Sir, if the doctor says so, why don't you listen to them? He looks at me with vaporous eyes. How can I, my dear child, I am wedded to Guru Maharaj and his work. How can I think of myself? He was asked not to give darshana to a crowd of devotees on his birthday. Because he was so tired that to sit was exhausting for him. So doctors prohibited, under no circumstances you would be allowed to do so. That was Dr. Strong. He listened, but he didn't say. And he asked me, could you take me to the window, put the table lamp on my face, and put me to the window, and push my backrest up, so that devotees can at least see me, and I can raise my hands to bless them. I said, sir, it would be too bad. Please listen to the doctor. What will happen if something happens to me? People will absolutely kill me that I have disobeyed the doctor. He looks at me with tears in his eyes, vaporous eyes. What are you saying, my child? This life is wedded to Sri Ramakrishna's service. They are all eager. How can I deny them? Please, nothing will happen to them. Please, please kindly do that for me. I couldn't but it still rings in my ears. How could I? He is a victim of his habit to serve Sri Ramakrishna's children. Loka Sangrahami Vapi Pashan. Look at from this point of view. You are setting an example for the struggling souls. Those who are struggling to reach that goal, you are a bright star to them. They say, oh, here is it. As I have told you, we have seen such people. Loka Shangra Mevapi Sampachan. Look at from that point of view. Kartam Arhasi. It is your duty. Thank you, dears. Thank you ever so much. 
I was waiting for this shloka. Now we will be moving on to different ideas. Thank you, dears. Thank you ever so much. We meet again as usual once a week.